Hi, my name is Daniel Mantilla. I am originally from Colombia, but I have been living and working in New York for a few years now. In this moment, I'm doing a residency with Residency Unlimited and the Artist Alliance. And this studio space is in the Clemente building in New York. I'm going to talk about the work that I have been developing throughout the residency. I would like to begin talking about a project that I was developing towards the beginning of the residency. The project was a play entitled Rock, Paper, Scissors that was performed on Zoom. And this play is one of the projects from an ongoing collaboration with the artists from the Sprague Sang Institute. Briefly quoting from the website, Sprague Sang Institute is a research-based platform for artists working in an in-between language of two or more disciplines. We believe in the ability of the gap between genres to produce fresh and innovative perspectives, offering room to breathe without boundaries, space to improvise, and to question conventions. We host regular lectures, workshops, and dinners to draw connections and facilitate discussion of in-between languages. And the word Sprechgesang refers to a vocal technique halfway between song and spoken word. During the first month of the residency, I developed all of the drawings that I used in the play. I was presenting the play and also introducing each one of the three acts that conform the play, each one of them entitled Rock, Paper, Scissors, respectively. Now, for the play, we were rethinking, especially because most of us don't come from a theater background, sets and props, lighting, music, sound, actors. We were also interested on the game Rock, Paper, Scissors as a structure to organize all of the visual, the experimentation that took place throughout all the months in preparation for the performance. We also uh, discuss about the ideas of attempts to communicate or often how we miscommunicate and this idea of a game to find solutions or resolution to conflict. So I use the drawings and text to activate the intermissions. The text that I developed for this were fragments from conversations that we had during the planning meetings and rehearsals, also descriptive anticipations of the events or series of actions taking place in each act. And I also added some personal experiences related to uh, rocks, to papers, and to scissors. The play was loosely described or defined by the group as a semi-minimal, somewhat meditative, awkward sort of play developed during the pandemic of 2020, which still continues. In an era of isolation, when we pass our days contracting a profound fascination with mundane materials. The project was originally developed by almost all the members of the Spregesan Institute, but later, um, it was um, seven artists, including myself, who organized the bulk of ideas that we had uh, gathered at the beginning and also gave the final shape for the play that was performed on Zoom. And the seven artists that uh, work on the final stages of the play and perform it, Katie Bell, Nathan Hagen, Ashley Williams, Sarah K. Williams is the founder and director of the Institute. I, I was uh, part of the introductions and intermissions. The sound design was by Francois Sarhan and the backstage was Whitney Newton. And more of the description of projects that we have developed until now, you can find it in spreggesanginstitute.com. I'm going to walk around the studio and talk a little bit about my process. As you notice, I'm working on several things at the same time but I would like to begin by focusing on the corner. I'm working with cutouts. Usually use the cutouts to start things in the studio, just to start making things and developing ideas. I'm using paper, which I cut with scissors or tear with my hands. And if you notice here on the top, I also have canvas cutouts from other paintings. So I'm constantly cutting uh, and marking. Sometimes I cut around the marks that I make first or sometimes I make marks around the cuts. If you notice I put the cutouts very close to the painting. To me the idea of enclosure and accumulation is very important to the way I build the spaces. In the paintings that I'm showing you here in, the, in this room I'm working with a 
characters that sit at a table and things are happening under the table. I often imagine my characters as couples or companions who are working together but who are often tricking each other. In this particular painting, I imagine this figure on the right talking to the other one on the left and this uh, cutout envision this as, um, as if the speech of the figure on the right became something solid. Moving to the next painting, this is another version of the first painting that I show you. So these are people sitting at a table, dealings, funny business are happening under the table itself. Sometimes playful things or interactions are hiding more violent or double intentions. Domestic spaces, rooftops, patios or gardens serve as scenarios for figurative elements such as scaffolds, companions and group of companions. This group of figures deal with each other or collaborate to assemble or repair. But I like to imagine them purposefully confusing, taking advantage and misplacing parts from each other. This is another one of the cutouts that I'm using with paper and canvas as a starting point for other works, but also I will plan to develop them into large abstracted figurative shapes that I install on walls or hang from ceilings. I would like to talk about these works on this table. I have these paintings on the table because I'm deciding where to glue some shapes. And I start playing with these shapes like this large shape here and I'm thinking why is placed on top of the face or where is it going to be placed. Like this green shape at the moment is limiting the vision of this figure but I'm also considering as something that is coming out of the mouth of the figure. I'm just playing around with these things but sometimes I start by gluing a shape on top of a patch of color like here it's already glued or in the middle of a painting when I'm not sure where to go and then I take it from there. And around these shapes and these colors I play with other pieces to see how I can add to this accumulation and enclosure. The last table I have some drawings. They're not precious. I make them uh, before, during and after I'm working on paintings just to think through the ideas that I'm developing on the larger works. In this drawing here you notice an entanglement of legs from the tables, the figures and the chairs. I'm making these drawings of chairs and also I'm still making drawings of the paintings that I showed you at the beginning, just deciding where to go with them. But I would like to focus on this little thing. This, um, when I'm walking around the streets I take pictures of chairs that have been discarded and I imagine that I take them home and I refurbish them. So this is a catalog of refurbished chairs or also I think of them as chairs that have seen better days. Often the chairs from the catalog make their way into the paintings. And I also use chairs that I have in places where I work and I include them in, in, my, in my drawings and paintings like the chairs that I have here in the residency space. Since I have been nomadic for a few months in 2020, I decided to make work that I could fold, that I could carry around easily and that I can put in containers or small boxes. This work was motivated in part by the in-between almost overwhelming transitional circumstances triggered by the pandemic in 2020. But I have also been making work for the last few years motivated by ideas of transition and instability. So this work that I am in the middle of figuring out resonates both with motivations already present in my work, which have been amplified by current factors and experiences. I am thinking about this particular double-sided cutouts and the cutouts that are also more three-dimensional as fences or the scaffolds that act like a pen but an enclosure that both kind of protects from the outside but also keeps things in. So I am thinking about these particular double-sided cutouts as both fences for patio sets or backyards or the scaffolds. In my work, scaffolds and contraptions become metaphors for development, neglect or prolonged restorations, sometimes for lack of planning. I see them as something provisional that is meant to fix or repair something. They contain in themselves the promise of something better, but also the danger to get stuck 
in an in-between stage or condition. My residency was made possible through Residency Unlimited's ongoing partnership with Artist Alliance, Inc. It has been an absolute privilege and pleasure to work at the Clemente Sotovelli's Cultural and Educational Center. I have to give a special thanks to Natalie Ungles for her immense support and uh, facilitating this great opportunity in a very important moment in my practice. So thank you, Natalie, and thank you for the team of Residency Unlimited, Lulu Meng, and also the team from Artist Alliance, Inc., Jory Weinberg, and Alessandro Fascente.